This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from WKYT. We're glad you're with us on this Wednesday. It's turning into be a very busy day here at WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And for Rebecca Smith, it's Wednesday, May 25th. And our time right now is 6.30. We have breaking details about a deadly house fire in Owsley County. We have learned that a child is now unaccounted for. Also, we're at the scene of a hostage situation involving children in Madison County. And what Fayette County Superintendent says is needed to improve the city schools. Plus, it's decision day for UK's Marcus Lee and Isaiah Briscoe. 50s and 60s this morning. It's a really good feel as you step out the door this morning. I don't see many issues whatsoever. We get into the afternoon, 85 degrees, humid conditions, and also a couple of rumbles to talk about. And I'll have that coming up in about 10 minutes. Let's get right to the news this morning. We are tracking a breaking news alert. We have just talked to the Owsley County Coroner, and he now confirms that a child is missing after a house fire that the sheriff is calling deadly. The home is on Highway 11, about two miles outside of Boonville. The coroner says a mother and two children were in the home when the fire started. Now, the mother and one of the child children are accounted for, but one child is not. We do have a crew on the way, and stay up to the minute with the WKYT News app and right here on WKYT. Obviously, we don't want to jump to any conclusions, but uh, pairing what we're hearing from the sheriff and what we're hearing from the coroner, uh, it appears to be uh, a sad outcome there. So we'll stay on top of that story this morning. Also breaking this morning, Kentucky State Police are on the scene of a hostage situation in Madison County. Yeah, this has been going on in Berea since about midnight. The scene is on East Haiti Road near Walmart. WKYT's Mark Barber is there live with the breaking details. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Michelle. State police have been in a standoff with the man for six and a half, uh, six and a half hours here. They say that he is holed up in a home with his wife and two kids. Investigators think that the father is the one who is responsible for this hostage situation. And they tell me that one of those kids is a teenager and the other is a child. Now, state police tell me that the standoff started around midnight. They say that they got a call from someone who reported hearing some trouble at the home. They say when they showed up, the man was barricaded inside the house with his family. They say that they quickly started evacuating the homes in the surrounding area. They also closed the road down. State police say that they do have a number of agencies here helping them try to uh, de escalate this dangerous situation. They say they're getting a hand from Richmond police as well as Berea police. They say that their hostage negotiators are on the phone with the man. They're trying to tell him he has got every opportunity here to step out of the house, to turn himself in, to end this peacefully. Take a listen. Uh, neighbors were asked to leave to, you know, try to, we want to make sure that they stay safe because uh, you never know what kind of. Uh, end or, or what can, what may happen during a situation like this. State police say they still do not know why this happened in the first place. They say they're trying to figure out what led up to this hostage situation. Again, they say their hostage negotiators are on the phone with this suspect right now, trying to convince him to let everyone go so that no one gets hurt. Of course, we will continue to stay on this story this, as it develops throughout the morning with live updates right here on WKYT and on our website, WKYT.com. Live in Berea, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And as one has covered uh, several of those over the years, uh, the police will always tell you they're trying to buy time, obviously, and uh, try to resolve this whole thing peacefully. And hopefully that will happen this morning. Disruptive, though, obviously, in the community. And new this morning, we have just learned that a teenager has died while on the job in Morgan County. State police say the victim is 19 year old Tyler Comer of Charleston, West Virginia. He was working on a cell phone tower on Hog Branch Road last night. State police say he lost his balance and when he was reaching for some tools and then fell to his death. The investigation is ongoing this morning. Today marks the anniversary of a Kentucky State Police Trooper's murder. Three years later, no arrests have been made. Bardstown Officer Jason Ellis was ambushed while removing debris from the Bluegrass Parkway. The city council there has proclaimed today Officer Jason Ellis Day. Clarifying he was a city officer there in Bardstown. They're asking people to leave their porch lights on tonight and to display blue lights. Well, after a year on the job, Fayette County School Superintendent Manny Calk is about to make some big changes. Yeah, today he'll lay out his vision for the district's future and how he plans to get there. WKYT's Caitlin Sintner is live to explain what we should anticipate. Caitlin? 
Good morning, Michelle. Now, this plan is something that will affect thousands of families in Lexington with school children, and that's why Superintendent Manny Cox says he'll continue to ask the school board to make investments that put students first. Cox will unveil his plan called Listening, Learning, and Leading to help move the Fayette County School District forward. The plan is the result of information gathered from five reviews conducted by independent auditors. Those findings were presented Monday night during the school board meeting. It included six recommendations recommendations that those auditors believe will make the school system more effective. Among their recommendations, reorganizing central office and redefining job responsibilities to help with school improvement. The auto audit also suggested that changes be made to make curriculum work for all students. One of the things that auditors noticed is that the different approaches in curriculum and instruction used in schools lead to inconsistencies in both teaching and learnings. Now, these are just a few things the superintendent will address at the meeting at 10 o'clock this morning here at Central Office. He'll also be talking to parents at 6 o'clock this evening at Bryan Station High School. And then if you would like to see a copy of that audit or the superintendent's plan, the full thing is on our website. Live in Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Thank you, Caitlin. New this morning, a large sinkhole is blocking a Lawrence County road. Kentucky 3 near Clifford is down to one lane for repairs. Emergency management says the road will be closed through this morning. They say the hole is about seven feet wide and about five feet deep. Wow, that's something uh, to see there. Well, a historic Lexington building is about to get a very modern update. The city unveiled a $30 million plan to renovate the old downtown courthouse. That plan calls for preserving the building itself while adding a restaurant, a bourbon bar, and some event space. The old courthouse closed in 2012 after it was determined to be unsafe because of lead paint. The city has approved $22 million so far to help fund the project. The project will actually be self-sustaining, so the city won't be required to add to its original investment. Revitalization of the courthouse will begin next month. It is expected to be completed in the spring of 2018. Lexington police say they're finding more and more credit card skimmers around town. Thieves use those devices to steal personal credit card information. Now, skimmers are usually on ATMs and gas pumps. Police say you should look for anything unusual on the machines before inserting your card. And when entering your PIN, cover the keypad with your hand as you do it. Many skimmers have small cameras on them. Attorney General Andy Bashir is asking the state Supreme Court to decide if Governor Matt Bevan can cut college and university budgets without the state legislature's approval. Bashir sued the governor after Governor Bevan ordered immediate cuts last month. A judge ruled in the governor's favor last week. The case would normally go through the state court of appeals. But Bashir says he is skipping that point because the case is of great and immediate public importance. After months of construction, Lextran is ready to debut its new headquarters. There will be a ribbon cutting and a grand opening at 10 o'clock this morning. The new building is on West Loudon Avenue near Russell Cave Road. And we'll find out today whether two UK players go pro or return to Kentucky. Yeah, the deadline for pulling out of the NBA draft is today. Now, most experts agree that both Marcus Lee and Isaiah Briscoe should return. Lee had a disappointing NBA combine, and Briscoe's father says he's getting some positive feedback from a handful of teams. The draft is June 23rd in Brooklyn. All right. Everybody's going to be anticipating. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Of course, it affects uh, the lineup for next year, so we'll see. 639, our time right now. Well, let's check to see how traffic's moving along this morning. Here's Officer Don with a check on live drive traffic. Hey, good morning, Don. Hey, good morning. Got a little problem inbound Nicholasville Road. It's just past Southland Drive. Two car collision. Uh, should be room to get past it, but in the meantime, something to deal with if that is part of your route. Harrodsburg Road through the crossover still looks great. Let's get a look outside and we'll show you what to expect as you head out the door this morning as far as traffic flow around Lexington. Uh, Bluegrass Parkway looks okay. Inbound Versailles Road is a straight shot, which takes us to our drive times this morning, and we're still okay on Versailles Road. No major problems past the airport toward Lexington. It's a short Ride about 12 minutes from Paris, 19 in Winchester, 21. Now back to you in the studio. Okay, Don, should be a good ride in for most folks. Thank you very much. And we're coming up on 640, 20 before 7 on your Wednesday on WKYT this morning. He's not walking down the aisle, but he sure gave it a good waddle. Uh. <laughs> I'll show you <laughs> the special honor a school gave a classroom pet. Quack, quack. No more crystal blue skies added about the next several days. It is a summer layout. We're going to feel that and also see a couple of rumbles of thunder 
throughout your next several days. We'll talk about that coming up next. And it is a beautiful start to your Wednesday. And here's downtown Lexington looking at Triangle Park this morning. We're coming right back on WKYT This Morning. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. A couple of sprinkles out and about in the far western zones. Other than that, it's actually a really nice start to the day. You're walking outside, not in the 40s, not in the lower 50s. We're talking upper 50s, lower 60s. We'll take that. But those little sprinkles here and there, they're falling apart as they roll on through. Just don't be surprised to see those overhead as we travel off through the next couple of hours. Now, the deal is we will have a daily threat at some rain chances. Current temperatures will also increase, and that'll put us there in the 80s later on this afternoon. And once we hit the afternoon, it's going to feel a little bit different each and every day uh, once we get in through the next several days because some moisture streaming in from the south. Now, there's a big system back toward the west. You've probably heard of those tornadoes from yesterday. They were actually twin tornadoes yesterday, two at the same time right beside each other. It was, it was phenomenal to actually watch, but uh, we're not, we're not going to see that. That front back toward the west, what what it's doing for us, it's not going to bring severe storms to us. It actually keeps that back toward the west. But what it's doing is it's actually pulling in a lot of that moisture, a lot of the warm air out of the Gulf of Mexico sliding into our region. And what that does is gives us the opportunity and some chances of rain. Remember, none of this is widespread. The widespread rain, the severe storms, that's back toward the west. For us, it's just a couple of rumbles here and there each and every single day. We're talking 20% to about 40% all the way through your weekend. And then we hit the weekend time off into your Memorial Day. And that's when we're going to be seeing uh, those temperatures there in the 80s, not just 80s, but also that muggy air with us too. So every single day through your weekend and off into next week, that's where we have the mid 80s, that tropical feel. Listen, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, those are perfect late days. You don't get into the summer where you have mid 80s and also maybe even a, uh, a couple of 90s without having a pop up shower or thunderstorm during the afternoon hours. This is kind of the same setup that we're dealing with today or, or this weekend. So, yeah, your Memorial Day weekend forecast, it looks pretty good. Even though you have that small chance rate, guys, we're talking 30%. That means what? 70% of us are going to be dry, okay? So, yeah, just take off, keep your plans, keep your events. All looks well. A lot of big events too coming up uh, this weekend. You got the Horsey Hundred. Uh, you got the Cornbread Festival in Monticello, and mm. also Richmond. The trade day is going on. Trade That's day. Big. Get, get yourself a bargain, right? There you go. <laughs> on uh, WKYT.com, we have some details about how it uh, leaves Ford Marina there to Lake Cumberland. They're rushing to get everything ready to go. They had, you know, all that snow on the uh, oh, yeah. back in the January yeah, collapse rooftop. Right. So uh, they say they're going to be ready. They're prepared for the weekend. Well, that's good. 6:46 is our time right now. You normally see ducks floating around ponds, but one Florida duck prefers center stage. <laughs> Announcing Sergio P. Dunn. <laughs> what a well, ham of a duck, huh? Sergio, <laughs> more than a class pet, he is also a graduating sixth grader and it seems to know he is important. His fellow graduates at Sun Tree Elementary School in Melbourne say he is more like a brother than a pet and that's why they included him in their graduation ceremony. Sergio won't be moving on to the seventh grade, though. He'll stay in the sixth, even though his friends are moving on. They plan to come back and visit. And Sergio has his own Instagram account if you want to check it out, by the way. I was really hoping you were going to tell me Sergio's moving on to middle school. <laughs> Doesn't sound like oh, it. Oh, man. That would <laughs> he, be pretty cool. He's though. comfortable in the sixth grade. Sounds like <laughs> good to have you along. 647 on WKYT this morning. We'll be updating all of our top stories here in just a moment. Yeah, more news when we come back. Coming up, a turbulent return to the campaign trail for Donald Trump. How protesters disrupted the candidate's Albuquerque rally. Plus, we report from Kansas on a destructive tornado outbreak that tore across the plains. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. Welcome back to WKYT. Thanks so much for watching. It's 6.50. And we have a lot going on this morning. I want to update you right now on what is going on with the story we've been following all morning long. Yeah, we have a crew headed to Owsley County this morning. We just talked to the coroner, and he says a child that was in the home is missing. The coroner says a mother and two children were in the home when it caught fire, and that one of those children is unaccounted for. Of course, we're not jumping to any conclusions here, but here is what we know. The home is on Highway 11, about two miles 
outside of Boonville. State and local police are on scene along with firefighters. The coroner says he has not been able to get into the home yet because the scene remains active as they're trying to put out the fire. Now stay with WKYT.com. Keep checking the WKYT News app for updates and on our newscasts, of course, we'll be covering the story throughout the day. We also have a crew in, live in Madison County where state police say two children and a woman are being held hostage. Now this situation in Berea has been going on since about midnight on East Haiti Road. Police say surrounding homes have been evacuated and the road is closed. We're also making some phone calls out of our newsroom this morning after learning that a teenager died while on the job in Morgan County. State police say the victim is 19-year-old Tyler Comer of Charleston, West Virginia. He was working on a cell phone tower on Hog Branch Road last night. State police say he lost his balance when he reached for some tools and fell to his death. But an investigation into that is ongoing right now. A community is remembering a Time Warner cable worker who was killed while on the job. Harrodsburg police say Dennis Kokenauer was hit by an SUV on Moberly Road. They say his work van had flashing lights on and he had blocked off an area with safety cones. But police say he was hit while walking around the van. Friends say his son was the starting catcher on last year's Mercer County High School baseball team and Kokenauer often helped coach. His visitation will be tomorrow night at Ransdell Funeral Chapel in Harrodsburg. A Moorhead State University police officer who was badly injured in a crash is showing some signs of improvement this morning. Police say Sergeant Anthony Dalton was heading home when his motorcycle crashed Monday morning in Moorhead. They say he suffered serious head injuries despite wearing a helmet. Now, Sergeant Dalton is still listed in critical condition at UK Hospital, but the MSU police chief says he is improving. MSU police say they are grateful for the outpouring of support. Three months ago, we told you about a UK doctoral student who is waiting on a kidney transplant. Now he has found a donor, and it's someone in the same program at UK before last week. Clay Graham knew David Scott, but not well. Graham says now he and Scott share a special bond. Now I realized David li David's life is going to change, my life is going to change, but I didn't realize the effect that would have on his family. We would have on my family, you know, other people. Um, and that's been pretty humbling. Now, Scott says he hopes their story brings awareness to how serious kidney disease can be. He also hopes it lets people know the impact organ donors can make on others' lives. Good story there, certainly. Well, fresh off a win in Washington's GOP primary, Donald Trump is turning his attention now to delegate rich California. Yesterday, violent protests erupted outside a Trump rally in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's a state that holds its primary next month. Trump's likely Democratic opponent, Hillary Clinton, is sharpening her attacks against Trump, while rival Bernie Sanders has called for a re canvas in Kentucky's May 17th primary, and that's set for tomorrow. A top TSA official testifies on Capitol Hill this morning over long security lines at airports nationwide. Peter Neffinger is expected to answer questions about staffing issues that disrupted travel at Chicago's O'Hare Airport in recent weeks. Congressional investigators say the government spends about three-fourths of its technology budget maintaining aging computer systems. The nonpartisan government accountability office says in its report today that the increasing cost of maintaining museum-ready equipment drains money that could go for modernization. GAO says the problem exists across the government, not just in a few agencies. Now, the Pentagon says it's in the process of upgrading its equipment. 654 on WKYT, and obviously two major stories have our attention in our newsroom right now. On WKYT.com, we're staying on top of the breaking news. The standoff north of Berea, state and local police continuing to try to resolve that situation with an armed suspect who may be holding his family as hostage. And in Owsley County, several crews are at the scene of what appears to be a deadly fire this morning. And we've reported in the last few minutes that a child apparently is unaccountable. For at this moment. We'll be keeping you updated as we get more information. Also trending, new plans for the old Fayette County Courthouse. We have renderings of how it will look online, and we talk with some about what they think it will mean for downtown Lexington with big changes coming to the old courthouse. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, winners of the primaries in Washington State, putting them closer to the Democratic and Republican presidential nominations. It comes as Bernie Sanders asks for that re canvas of the Kentucky results. 
That's happening tomorrow morning statewide. A lot of folks making lake plans for the Memorial Day weekend. I referenced this story earlier when we were talking with Micah. The owner of Lee's Ford Marina at Lake Cumberland says the docks will be ready for the weekend. It was a winter storm back in January when all that snow brought down nearly every roof-covered dock. It created a big repair job that cost more than $4 million to fix. Check out our story on that. And on Kentucky.com, the need to be careful as gas stations are seeing more and more crooks installing skimmers at pumps that steal your credit card info. And construction is now starting on a new upscale Lexington restaurant. Jay Alexander's is being built in the summit at Nicholasville Road and Manowar. CBS This Morning on the way shortly with your eye opener, and we'll have local updates, of course. They're getting ready to go at the CBS Broadcast Center. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest anytime, WKYT.com. Yeah, we're looking at a really nice start to the day, 50s and 60s. Outside and some sunshine peeking on through. And you know what? Today we are going to be seeing at least the chance, an opportunity at a couple of rumbles of thunder. Not everybody will see the rain today, but if you do, it's going to be heavy downpour and also a lot of lightning. 85 degrees later on this afternoon. It's 40% chance of rain today, guys. And that really is 20 to 40% chance of rain every single day mm -hmm. into early next week. So just get ready for that summertime. It's coming. <laughs> right. You just have to plan around it all, right. you know? All right, nobody is more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you so much for being with us. Remember, we'll be constantly updating the news on WKYT.com. Have a great day.